Good morning, all. Uh, can you hear me well? I'm so glad that uh, I had this opportunity uh, to actually tell my story in front of you. Uh, all my life, I've been actually, um, I mean, crunching numbers and try to tell the story uh, to the audience, but not just like uh, telling the story of Jesus Christ and share my experience. This is my first time to share uh, his word based on my experience. So um nervous at the same time, my mouth is dry. So anyway, uh, please bear with me. Uh, okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my experience with church members. I pray that only your message is delivered through me and your grace uh, bears fruit a hundred fold and a one thousand fold in our daily life. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, I'm new to this church. It's been two months that we are attending this church. Uh, my name is uh, Jinchul Park. Uh, please call me JC the initial of my first name. Well, my youngest daughter had not been able to attend this church till now, but um, I'm going to say in today's sermon that um, one of my prayers was for a whole family to worship together in one piece. But uh, guess what? Uh, she's attending today's service here. Now, we've been praying this uh, for years, actually, but um, the today is the day. One of our uh, family prayers is answered by the Lord. So, pray to the Lord. Yeah, I'm still nervous. Uh, my voice is still trembling, but I am feel great at the same time. Uh, I was so nervous when Pastor Ho requested that I preach during his absence. Because I know that I'm totally not qualified to uh, preach anything in front of you, but I took this opportunity as to a uh, way to share my personal experience of um, my faith life and my personal experience on that journey. Thank you. Yeah, for Christian, uh, prayer is a major part of our faith life. We, do you remember the first time you prayed? It may be challenging, but do you know, do you remember uh, what you prayed about? It may be challenging to remember the first time you prayed in your life. At the same, at the same time, but it's probably even more harder or challenging to remember what you prayed about. I do not remember what I, what I prayed about in my first prayer, but I clearly remember the first time I prayed. It was uh, 1975, I remember, my second year of middle school. I happened to sign up for a vacation Bible school without knowing what it is about, totally. But that was my first time I was exposed to church, Christianity, or prayer. Until then, I enjoyed um, following my mother to Buddhist temples. I really enjoyed it. I prayed alone, uh, kneeling on my bedroom floor, with tightly holding my hand together in one hot summer evening. The reason why I remember the first uh, prayer, even though it was about 50 years ago, is that because of the mysterious thrills I felt as I prayed. I remember I didn't know what to do about it, but the thrill that enveloped the whole body from head to toe. I was really scared, but I feel the sensation. Unfortunately, my face like uh, my prayer came to a halt. 
after the summer vacation. Looking back now, I remember it is the Holy Spirit or enveloped my whole body. But there's no one around me to could me lead to one step further on the path of my faith. My faith started and ended several times in between until I met my mentor pastor in 1998. Prayer is one of the key words mentioned in the Bible. Throughout the Bible, we find that people of faith were people of prayer. For example, uh, Job prayed to know what is he committed. And Moses prayed to beg for mercy for the Israelites who offer sacrifice to the golden calf. Elijah prayed for God's power when he confronted prophets of Baal. King Solomon prayed for discernment. Daniel prayed for help in interpreting king's dreams. And David's countless prayers to the Lord are chronicled throughout the Psalms. Jesus was, was also a man of prayer. It is recorded throughout the books of gospel that Jesus prayed, and he even emphasized the importance of prayer to his disciples. Jesus himself taught them how to pray, which is the Lord's prayer we often recite. Before being crucified, Jesus prayed for God's will to be done. And as he was dying on the cross, he prayed for the forgiveness of his enemies. Stephen prayed for the Lord to receive his soul and forgive those who were stoning him. The writer of the book of Thessalonians exhorted us to pray without ceasing. Also in Chronicles, Colossians chapter 2, verse 2, the Apostle Paul exhorted us to devote ourselves to prayer, be watchful and thankful in prayer. As such, the Bible illustrates uh, many examples of prayer so that we know that our ancestors of faith communicate with God through prayer and build an intimate relationship with God. We can assume that they clearly communicate with God and followed his words, not only at important moment, but also in their daily life. All the prayers in the Bible were solely for one purpose, communicating with God to establish relationship with him. We too communicate with him, with him through prayer, just like our ancestors of faith in the Bible. For us, Prayer is one axis of our faith life, along with worship service and the Bible study. We learn God and his teachings through Bible study, and through prayers, we establish a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. Is there any other way to communicate with God without prayer? Of course, you can argue that you communicate with God while just reading the Bible, and realizing his grace. But a two-way conversation with God is not possible without prayer. Let me introduce a poem Mother Teresa of the Calcutta wrote in a, about prayer in a book, Like a Little Child. Let me read a poem to you. Prayer is simply talking to God. He speaks to us, we listen. We speak to him, he listens. A two-way process, speaking and listening. There's, that is really prayer. Both sides listening, both sides speaking. When you uh, begin your faith life, you may have learned about prayer. Prayer is not just simply putting down what is in your heart to the Lord. It has several necessary rules or elements. Kelvin once said in, her, in his uh, note, Institute, 
that there are four rules in prayer. Those are revered fear, realize, realizing neediness, humility, and entire trust of Jesus. Calvin said the essence of the rule is if prayer is to us do any good, we must place our entire trust in God's self-revealed character, in his promises, and faithfulness. That is right. With the firm belief that God will definitely respond to our prayers, prayer must begin with the heart saying, I for short. I am created by God, and therefore I have no choice but to depend upon you. First, we praise the Lord with revered fear, and then we thank him for his grace. We must sincerely confess that we are sinners and he is our savior. After saying our prayer in an honest, desperate, and concise manner, we must end in the name of Jesus Christ, who gave his life for us and was crucified on the cross in order to uh, receive his intercession. Jesus is the only way to God because he restored us from sins and reconciled us with God. We have to remember that all of our prayers are answered. The Apostle James once warned us, you do not have because you do not ask. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask wrongly that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. If our prayers come from bad intentions, this is natural that not, they will not be answered. If you are in good faith, we would never pray with bad intentions. We would first spend, repent of such bad intentions based on the belief that bad intention will not please God. Have you ever felt that you received a clear answer to your prayer in your recent memory? If so, uh, take a moment to think about the prayer, how God responded to the prayer, and how long it took for him to respond. I have a vivid example of answered prayer. It was around uh, this time three years ago. Uh, my family was preparing to have my older daughter move to Chicago because she was about to start a graduate school in uh, three days. We packed the minivan and began our 12 uh, hour drive to Chicago. Everything was done, including immunization, school ID photo, uh, learning modules and all the prep work. All we need to do is help her move into a new apartment. That's what's left. So we drove almost six hours when my daughter said uh, suddenly she could no longer move into her apartment uh, because her roommate didn't sign the lease meaning that um, school uh, is going to start in three days, but she has no housing. So we had to come up with some plan B, even though we didn't understand reasons for cancellation. So we were at a complete loss. We felt that it would be impossible to find an apartment within three days in a city where we don't know anyone. We did not know what to do at all. So um, I had no choice but to pray to the Lord first. So we were in the uh, minivan somewhere in Ohio. And I put my hands on my right, uh, right shoulder who was driving. And the rest of us uh, hold our hands together firmly. And we prayed. And we prayed to God telling him of our situation, asking for his help. We prayed like this, dear Lord, you know that you are leading our daughter to Chicago. 
However, for some reasons, our housing has fallen through. And we now must find apartment in three days. Since it was you that led us here, we ask that you take this apartment situation into your hands as well. After praying, we felt a wave of relief wash over us, but still we felt ah, lost. So yeah, I was, uh, I told my daughter to look for a room on various real estate sites, including Craigslist, while I thought about uh, plan B, what to do when we arrive in Chicago. I think we had uh, prayed just five minutes prior, but she said, she found a fully furnished uh, studio in the downtown Chicago area on Craigslist. And then she said that the rent was cheaper than the original apartment. And most importantly, it was available right away. So she was going to call the owner. So I told her to do so, but to temper her hopes and expectations, just in case. But luckily, the conversation with the owner went very well. And we were able to reserve the studio and arrange a meeting with the owner in the same evening. The four of us immediately offered a prayer of thankfulness to God. How amazing. So to our surprise, we were able to meet the owner that same night and sign the lease. Well, I felt like it only took one hour to find a new apartment after we lost one. How amazing it is. Well, our daughter stayed in the studio for three years of her graduate program and returned home after graduation. We have been praying that God would, uh, God would guide our children in their work, as well as all aspects of their lives. However, we did not expect uh, God would answer our prayer in such a short and dramatic uh, way. Well, God must have known that we are in a situation uh, when we cannot rely on anyone but him. Or God may want us to show he is with us. Well, that day, we confirmed once again that uh, he is definitely in our lives and he is leading us. Well, please uh, do not think that answers to prayer comes very quickly and as desired, just like my experience. If you think so, you're probably mistaken. I'm only telling you about a very quick and dramatic examples. My wife and I often um, are praying for my younger daughter's um, job issue uh, since last year, but it took almost a year uh, for the prayer to be answered. During the several job interviews since last year, we talked to each other. Will she land the job this time? Or how long should you wait? Well, God will give it to us in his time, eventually. We just, we just have to wait. Please do not be discouraged. If your prayers are not answered late, or do not seem to have been answered, the answer to prayer is entirely up to him, up to God. So we just have to trust the Lord and wait. And God will answer. Well, I have talked about prayer at length so far. Yeah, we pray and wait for answers, but we often forget that we have already received uh, his answers to our prayers. Or we may not even realize that we have received his answers already. Of course, I'm um, no exceptions. I often realize that my, answer, my prayer was answered long before. In fact, uh, in most cases, it is difficult to determine, uh, especially when our prayer is not specific. Doesn't the Lord answer our prayers in our daily life? Uh, how about this morning? The fact we uh, woke up in the morning feeling great, the fact that we walked with our dog this morning, the fact that we came to church safely, 
the fact that our family started Sunday peacefully. Isn't everything we experienced till now answers to our prayers? I mean, answers to prayers seeking for peace in our daily life. That is deep in our heart, even if we don't pray, pray out loud. Or answers to prayers that we don't necessarily pray since that those uh, prayer topics are trivial or not something special. I don't know if it, we define uh, only dramatic or surprising answers as answers to prayers. Isn't there any arrogance in our heart that we consider ordinary blessings in our daily life and not answers for our prayers? When I first started uh, my faith life, I asked my mentor, uh, pastor, about answers to prayers. He said, um, all our prayers are answered, and they are coming three ways. First, uh, God answers immediately. Second, God uh, says to wait. And third, God says no. Even when he does answer our prayers, he does not always answer them the way we want or when we want them. This is because uh, God is not a bending machine that gives us grace according to our desire, our prayers. We need to remember that the Lord answers our prayers in his time, in his way. In response to the Israelites, cry out due to harsh suffering and slavery in Egypt, God sent Moses and Aaron 400 years to free them. It took 400 years their, uh, and their prayers to be answered. Even after the Exodus, it could have been a two-day uh, journey to Canaan, the Promised Land, if the Israelites uh, went straight. But instead, they had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years before they entered the promised land. Can you imagine how eagerly the Israelites would have prayed that their journey would end quickly and they settled down in the promised land? During the Holocaust period from 1933 to 1945, nearly 6 million Jews were persecuted and massacred throughout Europe. How desperately people must have cried out to God to stop the massacre during the time. Their fervent, tearful prayers took 12 years to be answered until the such atrocity ended. Our prayers may not be answered in our lifetime or it may take several generations. Therefore, it is better to leave the answer to our prayers entirely to God, to providence, and just pray. In fact, Jesus also left, to, left it to God's providence after praying. When Jesus prayed on the Mount of Olives before being crucified, entrusting God to do his will, he said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. In the end, Jesus was killed on the cross according to his will. The Almighty God knows our intention in our prayers, in our hearts. Jesus said, so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Well, what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things. And your Heavenly Father knows that you need them all. God knows not only prayers we pray out loud, but also the prayers we have in our hearts. He, ho he also knows the reason and motivation of our prayers. What can be impossible for the Lord who created heaven and earth? 
it is important for us to let go of our worries and pray honestly, just as we are. We are nothing but a naked being before him. So people praying, I would like to suggest we first sit before God in silence and examine our hearts and intentions. Then how about praying honestly, believing that if we are in the Lord's name, he will answer. And believing that the Lord has good will for us. Perhaps as George MacDonald once said, if we are Christians who always prays and does not lose that strength, we will value talking to God much more than getting our prayers answered as we wish. That could be the ultimate goal of prayer. God knows all our prayers, and yet God wants us to pray. Why does God want us to do that? I believe it is because he wants us to focus more on him and live according to his word. Ultimately, is it because God wants us to restore our relationship with him and return to him? Isn't that why he sent Jesus to us, calling us to return to him and forgiving us of all our sins with the blood of Jesus? Therefore, I believe uh, practicing the words of the Apostle Paul is a starting point of a proper prayer life and a faith life. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Let me summarize. Prayer is a communication channel that creates a one-on-one -on -one relationship uh, between God and us. Just as our faith ancestors always talked to God and built an intimate relationship, I think we should do the same. What if we make prayers an integral part of our lives, not worrying about anything, but pray to God in everything with thanksgiving? Isn't this the prior life we should tr uh, truly pursue? The life of faith with God? Then I believe that the peace of God who knows even our innermost thought will guard our heart and mind in Christ Jesus. Then I believe that the good God, the creator, will abundantly grant us not only the things we ask in our, heart, in our prayers, but also the things we have not even mentioned to him. Let's pray together. Heavenly God, let us reach out for you through prayers and build an intimate relationship with you. So we may always allow ourselves to be guide, guided by you. Always follow your plans and perfectly accomplish your holy will. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.